Hi chaps, how are you all doing? Like the new haircut? Going a bit military style. John's back to his old military style haircuts. But anyway, this is the <laughs> this is the last of my little um, weathering series that I'm doing on the uh, the the pens or two. And this part of the video is really not got much to do to, to do with weathering or anything like that. It's got to do with the dio part of it and uh, the extras and things we're putting on just to just to why not stick it in and just show people how I do little base dials and things like that so if I just change the angle of that it might creak I do apologize sometimes it creaks sometimes it doesn't right but on the bench and these are all the bits and pieces that I'm going to use for this dial right um just got all the little bits and pieces together for so I just take them away and we'll we'll start with the uh with the, with the base itself first right so this is the base I'm going to use remember it's um, that uh, blackboard cheap pound shop blackboard all rough edges bits of excess glue and all that kind of stuff they're not the best they're not the best finished so we've got to get all that sanded and things but we'll just do a quick mock up hey fall over of you know roughly what we're going to do what we, what we said we were going to do with it right we're going to have the uh, M3 Lee and our little uh, captured pens or two we're going to use the little Harley Davidson which is going to be here we'll just, we'll just balance it there it's going to fall down but who cares All right. then we've got our couple of figures we've got the uh, commander there for the Lee he's on his stick so I can't take him off so leave him on his stick so right, we've got a commander there for the Lee He's going to be standing here beside the tank. They've all got binoculars, so basically what they're doing is they're um, it's a kind of forward observation post or whatever you want to bloody well call it. But it's just an idea, right? And we got two soldiers, sentries type things, just covering off. Okay, one's going to be covering off in this direction, one's going to be covering off in that direction. And what that is, it's just sort of flank security, as we call it in the army. So they're, they're not actually at the firing positions, but they're, you know, ready to go in case something happens. So they're watching off in the opposite way, while the observers and tank commanders and crews look off this way to see what this shit is happening. What's the latest story? Okay. So, let's put that back on its little clip and put them away because they, these are all finished um, they're just ready to be to be put on um, I have the, the Harley driver as well they're ready to go and he's got a set of binoculars in his hand so three of them are going to have binoculars so therefore that's what makes it a kind of a forward observation thing in the jiggy right like I said we have our little Panzer two all ready to go nicely finished uh, we have the uh, M3 Lee which I finished off it just needs a little bit of tidying up is all it needed and the tracks needed to be redone but they're all nicely done now and everything else so that's ready <coughs> so this one we're really working on the dio and it's a kind of a quick introduction to quick dio bases and something 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 not complicated you don't have to go into walls and all that kind of stuff this is just getting say how you want to do a quick display base type thing okay and I've done many of them in the past before and I've kind of skipped over it but this one will go in a little bit more depth on, on you know exactly how I do it right so we start off like I said with our cheap um, blackboard and we're going to tidy it up a bit okay so I'll get up my sander and I'll sand that down get it nice and even and not so rough and gritty okay so that's all got to be cleaned off then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stain it okay so I'm going to use a sort of a mix or uh, make kind of a, a wash with some uh, metal spirits and some oil paints and get a nice darker stain on the outside of that right so once that's stained then I'm going to, well actually I leave the stain until the very end believe it or not but I'll just cover it with uh, some tamiya tape the edges once we have it sanded and nice okay so it won't get uh, any of the anything else stuck to us and things we don't want any of that thing right then we'll put down some das clay and we leave down a nice base of the das clay and that but because that is quite shiny being a blackboard when I'm sanding all around here I'll give that a rough up as well so I'll give something for the das clay to stick to so we'll put our das clay in the center of that right 
then what we do is we give it a good coating of PVA glue PVA wood glue I use it, I use it cheap pound shop stuff it does the job all right and then I'll sprinkle it on because we're going to be it's going to be um, not necessarily a grass area not necessarily a sand area or thing we're doing a bit of everything on it okay so it's just going to be a kind of um, a bit of scrub ground okay so we've got a mixture of um, sand and grit we've got a little bit of scrub grass we've got some flock we've got a bit of finer sand I'm going to use some of this um, it's, it's not quite static grass I think it's just kind of loose flock okay stuff in that so it would be just a, a sort of a sprinkling around of that once all that's done then I'll take off the tomato tape and I'll give it a varnish the edges right just get it all nice and shiny and then put on our pieces lay them, get them into position and ta-da then you've got your little display board not too big it can fit onto sort of most shelves and um, it's a nice little display piece for your for your for your um, for your kits. So my next step is to get this all sanded off, okay? And when that's all sanded off, I get it covered with uh, a bit of tamiya tape or a bit of masking tape. It doesn't have to be necessarily tamiya tape because you're not going to be lifting paint. So why use the expensive stuff? You can use a cheap pawn shop masking tape on that. Just get their sides masked off because once it's all nicely um, smoothed off and things like that it'll, we don't want to get it any more dirtier and then we'll start with the DAS clay okay so the next clip I'll be um, I'll have this all done and we'll be start doing the DAS clay and how to put down a bit of DAS clay because not everybody knows how to put down a bit of DAS clay I know it might sound so stupid that you know to show people putting in laying down the DAS clay not everybody has done these things before and people are like oh, I don't know how to do that I don't know how to do this these are so simple um, everything I'm doing here is just so simple and straightforward that you don't need um, a big video to show you how to do it or, or me rambling on for hours showing you how to do it so next clip like I said I have this all nicely sanded down because it is too rough I don't like the uh, the feel of it I want to get it nice and uh, we'll start then with the, uh, with, the with the clay and getting the uh, our ground down okay all right now I'm after getting it uh, nicely smoothed off it's nice and there's a nice touch to it now whereas it was all rough because they're only cheap things and we've roughed off the um, the blackboard section as well so it's nice and uh, rough so next step is to get some of this masking tape I'm going to use the cheap stuff because I use my good Tamiya tape on that and all we're going to do is we're going to mask off the wood okay reason is I don't want any discoloration from the uh, from the dust clay to get in there because I use the um, the terracotta clay and it will discolor anything that you decide to touch off it and you find that when you're using that stuff your hands and all go bright orange because I use the terracotta one rather than the white stuff I don't know why I just prefer the, the uh, terracotta um, I suppose because it, it's kind of a, a natural clay color so if anything does scrape off you're not having um, white underneath it, it still holds the terracotta colors you know the um, the natural clay ground color okay so that's it John, throw the feckin mask and tape everywhere and finally the last little bit across this side Now we have our frame protected. Okay. 
Next step, the old dust clay. So I'll roll up the sleeves so I don't get dust clay all over my clothes and have Mrs. Moore giving out to me and clogging up her machine. So, this is our dust clay and we get a lump of it. And you soften it up a bit and literally just squeeze it in. You see what I mean? By barely touching off it, it'll discolour everything and anything that it gets near. Okay. So we fit that in. Oh, you don't need to see me doing all of it, but you get the idea of how I do it. Little bits, put it in, push it down. I'll uh, come back to you when I've got all that done and we'll show you what we'll do then, okay? Right, now we've got our thing covered in dust clay, okay? And it's, as you can see, it's a bit all lumpy and bumpy and, and that. We want it a little bit smoother, okay? So, best thing for smoothing clay is a simple bit of, uh, give it a sprinkle of some water. I should have topped up my bloody water before I did all this, shouldn't I? If I can shut it. Typical. Flipping typical out of job. So anyway, just you don't need too much because remember the more water it that goes into it, the longer it's got to you got to leave it to dry. Right? So once you get the surface wet. Oops, I'm spilling my tea now. Yeah, you rub it in. There's a bit I just two seconds, I just want to move my tea. I don't want to spill everywhere. There we go. Now I can do it. Oh, my uh, thing. As you can see here, that's why another good reason why we uh, put down our masking tape. And we don't want to totally discolour our the edges of our base. don't need too much and don't go adding water just sort of keep spreading around what's there if you know what I mean right so try and get it nice and level and here is that you see where the joins are and things like that where you've say joined bits of clay together water will get down in between all those and solidify all that okay so Oh, I'm nearly, nearly happy with that now. Very, very nearly. Now, I don't want it super smooth because it's, it's going to be, you know, ground. So, you know, the ground isn't exactly uh, dead flat. So you don't want it to be dead flat. But because I'm going to put in vehicles on it and things like that, I don't want it to be too uh, lumpy either. So we want a kind of a happy medium, shall we say. So, once we get all the right left nice and uh, and smooth, right left, you know what I'm calling it right left. That's a kind of an Irish joke to a certain degree because the Irish for right is das and the Irish for left is clay. Not spelt the same obviously, but so, you know. You're in the army and you're marching, you go, you know, the left, right, left, right, left, right. Well, in the Irish army, it's clay, das, das, clay, das, clay, clay, das, and all that kind of thing, right? So then when I found so the modelling thing and I found this stuff, das, clay, <laughs> it's a bit of right, left, so. Weird Irish joke, so. It only makes sense if you understand the, uh, the Gaelic, shall we say. So, there we go. I'm happy with that now, right? No. What I do for a finish with that, not you don't need to do this step, but I find this step uh, just handy. Okay, is uh, uh, dirty hands. Get a tissue and I'll just give the hands a little bit of a clean up. Right. I use just a small bit of. Um, oh, excuse me, sorry for reaching back there. I just use a small bit of uh, PVA. And I give it a little rub like that. And I 
rub the, cleave, the PVA over that. Oh. Whether it does any good for it or not, I do not know. Okay. Uh, whether I need to do this step or not, I do not know. But I do it. I've done it in all of them. So. Never had any problems in the past with it. Someone told me that by putting it on, it prevents cracking in the um, in the clay. But I've never had the clay crack anyway. So, like I said, I don't know whether it's one of these sort of pointless steps. I find that in modelling, there's a lot of uh, a lot of pointless steps. People do the things, and there's no real need to do them. Uh, uh, and they're messy. So I'll just get more tissue. Then you have an old roll of um, bog roll beside you. Help to clean the hands. Okay. So, what we've got done, we've got our base uh, sanded, oh, sanded and prepared. We um, masked off the, the wood we want to keep nice and clean. We've put down our das clay, nice layer of das clay. We've given it a, a top coat of um, uh, PVA wood glue. I'll just sort of take off any of the excess because I only want a kind of a, a thin layer of it. I did put down a bit, a bit much. Okay, just want to remove some of that. And our next step now for that is just to leave that sit overnight in a nice warm place, warm dry place. Um, beside the, don't put, don't you don't want it in a hot place because you heat it up too fast or warm it up too fast and dry it off too fast, it will crack on you. But let it just dry naturally, okay? And when that's all dry, we'll come back to it and we'll do the next bit, okay? So that's it now for the moment. Next clip, next time you see it, shall we say, it'll be all dry. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be all dry. It'll be all dry and we can start doing, uh, preparing our base then. Okay, and then putting the, uh, our sand and our gravels and whatever you want to put onto it, into it. And when that's, when they're dry then we can start putting on our, uh, our vehicles and our figures. Okay, so that's the messy side done with. Um, I'll be back to you on the next one, next bit, and this will be all nice and dry and set and solid, tasty, yum yum, <laughs> and uh, we'll continue on then from there. Right now chaps we're back and as you can see that's all nice and dry and the colour does come off in your hand, the bloody stuff, it's deadly. But anyway, right, we've got our base, it's dry, what are we going to do to it next? As you see, it's got a little bit of colour variation. It's got sort of dark and bright and this, that and the other. But I'm not happy with it yet, okay? I want a bit more colour on the base. Before I start adding the earth and this, that and the other, I just want a bit more underneath colour, okay? So I'm going to use a mixture of three different... Well, not a mixture of three different colours. I'm going to use three different colours. And I'm going to give it a light spraying. And I'll show you after each step, okay? First of all, I'm going to use uh, flat brown. XF10. Going to use some uh, olive drab, XF62, and a bit of flat black, XF1. And it's just to just to vary that a slight bit, okay? It's not going to be drastic. I'll show you now in a second because the next clip is going to be uh, with, the, with the three colours down, okay? So when the colours are down, then we'll uh, move on and we'll see what we'll do after that, okay? Alright, now I'm after, I've done the brown. Next now we'll do a bit of green. See what I mean about random? Just little patchy bits and random bits. And as you build it up, it'll even start to look like um, a bit of waste ground. Because that's what we want it as. It's a bit of waste ground. And I've decided that this little patrol is going to be in Tunisia. Okay, in Northern Africa. Because um, a lot of the torch stuff was painted green. Actually, 90% of the uh, torch landing stuff was painted green. And the Americans did use the, uh, the leak in... Um, 
in Africa. They did very rarely, it was very rarely used in Europe. So, and it had been these would have been, the Panzer twos would have been used by the Germans in uh, Tunisia as well. And there are pictures online of uh, a little Panzer two captured by the Americans. It wasn't painted green, but you know, I mean there was a bit of artistic license in that one. But anyway, uh, so it's going to be a little bit of patchy ground in Tunisia, and Tunisia isn't all desert, okay? Um, most of uh, what Tunisia was was. If you look at anything from the torch landings and things like that, northern Tunisia and that area was actually quite green and fertile. And um, so we're we're going with um, just a little patchy, patchy ground. Okay, so it's going to be some some area in in, um, in Tunisia, and this is a, a sort of a forward advanced patrol. Okay, so I'll do the the uh, bit of olive drab in it now, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at what it looks like with a bit of olive drab. Right now, as you see, I've the olive drab done. So it's starting to kind of look camouflaged, isn't it? Which is the whole purpose of, of the, uh, the exercise, is to kind of camouflage your base. Because that's what camouflage is, is to make your vehicles look like the base, look like the, the ground and the surrounding areas. So, um, before we finish off that now, I'll just put in a little bit of black, just to, you know, a bit of shading in different areas and things like that. And uh, then we'll get on with the next step, okay? So, I'll just... Uh, Finish off any bits of uh, olive drab that were left in the uh, in the brush, and because it doesn't matter where your colours are going, you only have to clean your brush once with this. <laughs> Just a little bit of black. I'm only using a tiny little bit now, so you can add your black in on top of that. Okay, and. Like I said, just little bits here and there. I'm trying not to make it in, um, you know, patchy areas. You know, stretch out like little lines, like that. Now, why you do this? I haven't the faintest idea. It's just this is something I did there one time and I just thought that the base looked actually better with underneath all the different things because when the colours started coming through because the little areas that you miss with uh, your, your, your cover your ground scatter it just looks better okay and that's why I said I'd do it okay and just the smallest bit of black now we leave there we go just the last little bit look you can spill some of me friggin' hand you bloody jitter. anyway I'll just clean up my hand I'll leave this dry for a while and uh, we'll go on then to the next step where we be um, we start to get some um, some ground cover on it some bit, a bit of uh, texture a bit of sand um, some uh, some flock uh, I'm not going to be putting any stones in because these are so, uh, won't have much space really you know but um, and the vehicles and the men and things that are going to cover up most of the base anyway so it'll just be sort of little bits of sand and little bits of flock and things like that and we just have it like nice and patchy because that's the whole purpose of it it's a patchy section of ground so next section we'll have it um, that, that'll be dry so I'll leave that dry for a while and uh, I'll get everything prepared and get clean up my old airbrush clean off my hands and stuff and uh, we'll move on then from there And now we're down to the next bit. This is uh, as good as dry. The great thing about uh, airbrushing to me a paints is they dry practically instantly on you. So now what we're going to do is, at this point we've got to figure out our final um, positioning of everything, right? So we got to start with the largest piece, right? Which would be the, the M3 Lee. A little bit of an angle. We'll start with it there anyway, because it it more than likely it will get moved around and positioned and repositioned and God knows what else, right? So we've got our little uh, Panzer two there, and now we've got our figures to decide. Right, we've got our Harley Davidson. We want to put it there, I'm thinking. Right, and we've got the figure for the Harley. Get him off his little clip. 
and pop his head off. I'm going to re glue that back on. It's just his, his helmet should become a bit loose there. Right, so he's going to go there. Okay, I'm happy with him there. Right, now these figures, as you notice, <coughs> what I've done is I've drilled up and I've stuck in a little bit of um, toothpick or whatever you want to call them. These things, cocktail sticks, toothpicks, you name it, that there, that's what they are, right? So we keep it that long for when we're painting them and things like that. So now we want to place them in. So I cut it down to about that much. Just the tiniest little piece, right? Then I get a pointy stick. Me, 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 me. A little pointy, uh, pointy jobby, right? And I say, right, where am I going to stick him? I'd like him to be here. He's got a hand out, you see, so his hand can be there on the tank, right? So, kind of give a little mark as to where we want to stick him. I'll just move that so we can see what we're doing. You see, it's so after leaving a tiny little mark. And our clay is actually still soft enough to make a little hole. And there we go, all right? So he can be there, hand up on that. And he's discussing there, okay? Right, we've got our chap with the uh, little um, the little shooty thing, machine gunny shooty thing, handheld shooty thing, all right? We're having him here, so sort of, you know, just aiming off in this direction. So he's not actually getting involved with the conversation that's there. He's looking out for uh, what's going on. So same idea with him. Make our mark, which is handy when you paint it because the paint is still sort of not fully dry. It'll actually leave an imprint. Make a little hole. And pop him in okay so he's there looking off that way deciding you know covering off right now our next chap he's going to be covering off in the opposite direction so where are we going to put him so first of all we'll give him his shortening down for positioning so he's got his little stub and we, we, we'll figure out where to put him now we could put him here that would be a nice position for him wouldn't it he's kind of covered from the tank he's got a bit of thing and he's looking off in that direction so we give him a little mark push our tank away and if you can see that little mark there just the tiniest little mark And he'll pop in here like that and move our tank back up again so that's our little scene set okay now the microphone i know that the harley's going to fall over because i haven't got that set in place yet okay so there's our little scene okay with the motorbike upright position not lying down okay so that's our position so what do we do We'll take off these again, the big pieces, take them away, just leaving our three figures. Get a toothpick, cut away the pointy bit, and we want a piece about that size. So when we pop him out, we can pop in a little marker stick. That's figure one. And the same idea with these two. Pop away the uh, pointy bit. Pop out our chappy. Stick in a little marker. And the same with Mr. Number Three. Okay, pop him out. Get out 
Flasche äh, Cocktail Stick. And stick him there. Okay. So now we don't need the finger away safely. Safely, John. Safely. Where's John being safe? All right. Put them over there. So they won't get hurt anymore. Damaged and what they are already. All right. So what's next? What next is we get a little container. To which we add some PVA glue. Just a small bit, we don't need that much of it. Okay, a bit of PVA glue. We'll give it a small just a small little touch of water. We don't want it too thick, but we don't want it too thin either. Okay, and then we get a brush. Give it a little stirrings. Now, as you know, PVA dries uh, clear, so we're not too worried about that, it going white. And we basically paint our base with PVA, PVA gloop. Okay, now you, you don't want it too thin, because it won't do what you want it to do, but you don't want it too thick either. Okay, it's kind of a, a happy medium if there is such a thing. And this is where we start going all Bob Ross and you. What we're looking for, believe it or not, are happy accidents. Okay, that's what we want. We want happy accidents. Oh, I did not want that to pool around that because I don't want the stick bloody with gluing in there. I want it in there, but I don't want to glue it in. So we'll be gluing in our uh, our chappies, our figurines in there. Okay. So now this is how we. This is the fun bit, as, as we say. The, the the artistic piece of this will start coming out now on this one. Okay. All right. Get it nice and evenly spread around. Like I said, we don't want too much pooling around the sticks because. I don't want the sticks to glue in. I know they're going to, they're going to, and you're going to have to kind of pop them out and things like that. But they're they're, they're marked, and it's handy. You know where the figures are going, right? We're finished with the PVA. We'll put that away. We remind ourselves to clean the brush afterwards, otherwise we got another ruined brush. <coughs> and I start you. This is why I start using things like this, right? These little homemade grass tufts, and uh, these were sent me by uh, Greg, Greg Riley sent me these, if you want to know how to make them go over, get over to Greg's channel, he'll show you how to make up all these little grass tufts what they are is little just bits of static grass in all different tufts and different sizes and things like that, ok now you can use some of these I'll just get off a few ok oh. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. With the homemade ones, they are, unless you use the um, kind of a silicon paper for them, and if you use this type of paper, all you got to do is you just got to trim around the base. And but they'll do the job just as easy for a fraction of the price of going off and buying army painter tufts and things like that okay so we get our little tuft and we'll stick it there because we know that there's you know there's going to be nothing there the, the motorbike will be sitting there <whistles> handy to whistle while you work bit of Bob Ross singing there he kind of hums away and sings to himself doesn't he or is that Rolf Harris? That's Rolf, that's Rolf Harris. He does a bit of the old singing. I promise I won't sing to you because uh, I don't have the, uh, a singing voice. Never did. And it's not going to start at, 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 at 50 years of age, or 52, should I say. And that's suddenly going to take up a career in, uh, in the music industry. Right, let me stick another one there. 
just in the foreground okay we, we go one more just back here just one nice big high one that one will do perfect la, 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 la. right and another one where are we there we go we stick him back there right now we get out our pva glue again i didn't think we'd need it again but we do and i just use a smaller brush of the pva just to any bits of the paper that are showing and so whatever we're going to use our flock and stuff will stick over that and then you to kind of uh, push these down as well this one won't conform conform you move it around until it gets until it lies down or push it down with your finger <laughs> right so there's our little tuft stone like i said this is only just going to this is, they're handy little quick display bases if you want to see sort of buildings and things like that i uh, suggest you go over to uh simon kemp's 135th scale diorama builds channel here on youtube and you get to see how to make walls and buildings and absolutely fabulous dioramas over there on simon's channel but this isn't about big dials and buildings and things like this it's just quick little display base well not quick but a little display base okay so now we'll get some of our finely sifted sand or mixture of rough stuff and what it is it, most of this is actually it's um a mixture of i got a bag of um decorative sand from the pound shop right for, for your garden it was a big geez, it was nearly a tombstone of the bloody stuff right but it was all pebbles and all that kind of stuff in it and pebbles were a bit too big i've them sifted off i'll use them in other things right i even used some in the in, in the garden for what they were actually supposed to be used for but i used a sieve and i tapped it out and i got different grades by using different different sieves and, and finer ones and things like that right and there's my really fine stuff and that was the rough stuff okay so we get a bit of the rough stuff. Let me sprinkle it down like that. Simple as that. Right. All over. Don't matter where it goes. We want it a bit everywhere, like we said. This is a bit of uh, waste ground. So there's going to be nothing... Um, nothing exciting. It's not going to be mowed lawns out in the middle of nowhere. Okay. Right. Small bit of that. And we'll use now some some grass. A bit of grass. This is uh this this or this <laughs> create your adventures it's it's um just uh, you know the loose green ground covering whatever they call it it's not it, it, flock i suppose you'd call it um you find it in a lot of the hobby stores that do trains especially um people use it in in the gaming the gamers use it a bit for their terrain and uh us modelers use it to make dials so there's all different companies that make it there's all different uh grades and all that kind of stuff okay and what you're looking for is sprinkle you don't want to make it anything kind of look uniform if you know what i mean okay 
and go over the edges with it make sure it goes over the edge so when we take off our uh, our tape that it's uh, all the way to the end okay you haven't got a panel like that right so we get a little bit of this uh, static grass stuff okay and what all what this was is actually it was the stuff that fell off the um the the tufts okay and just give that a kind of a sprinkle around it's just to you know give a variation in color to the green so it's got sort of a light and a dark green you know whatever you use you know you can't be wrong you know um this is just an idea just to give you a general look at what, what what you can do with this type of stuff okay and what all these little products are for like i'm sure we've all seen them in our uh, in our hobby stores oh, i don't really know how to, i won't bother with that i don't really know how to use that you need a special applicator yes doing this is static grass and to get it to stand up you need a you need a special applicator and you need uh it, it works on sort of negative and positive electricity thingamajiggies right now get it nice and random get variations of color in there light and dark and all this and all that quite simple nothing too uh, difficult so simple you'd be amazed absolutely amazed shocked and stunned you know uh, at the overall effect for a finish well, I have been in the past I've, I've kind of amazed myself at uh, how s something that it was so simple to do you said Jeez, that's a great effect you know why didn't I think of that before and this that and the other right so now we go with our little, our, 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 our really fine sand, and what we want to do is sift it over. And what that will, you know, don't worry about it too much, because what we'll be doing is we'll be turning the board on its side in a few minutes and giving it a tap. And all the excess will fall off and we're left then with uh, what we want okay so like I said you don't have to be too precise with it no there we go simple as that I'll just give it a kind of a little pat 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 just to pat it down in different all these little areas okay now what we'll do is we're going to leave that dry for about five minutes that is all five minutes and then I'll show you what to do then okay so I'll leave that for about five minutes and uh, be back in uh, I'll be back in two seconds as far as you're concerned but I'll be back in five minutes when this is uh, just give it a chance to sort of set a bit okay so when I find the controls for this bloody camera I think Right, and now we're back. We've given it its five minutes drying time. Well, not really drying time because it's not dry, but it's settled in, if you know what I mean. So, simple as this, all we do is we get the board and we tap. Okay. Give it a tap and it'll blow. I'm going to remove all the, uh, any excess that's on it. Then, at this stage, believe it or not, we can remove our masking tape okay now, this is a slow tedious process so you don't need to see me struggling with a bit of masking tape but you don't want to rip it off you want to be careful in removing it because you don't really want to uh, tear too much into see that really reveals our nice little uh, base 
age, shall we say. Oh, how you finish off this edge, that's up to you. I'm going, like I said, I'm going to give it a, a bit of a, a bit of a stain. I'm going to use some uh, oil paint and a bit of uh, white spirit. Make down a little kind of a, a wash with that, and then when that's dry, then varnish it. So. that there we just take this off just for a second that's our, uh, our clean mat a bin underneath me here which is handy let's go there onto the bin and we put it back up on top of it again now our wash I didn't leave, bring out leave out the wash she didn't no that would be a sensible thing to do, John. Now, handy old little tomato container again. So I made it down a little bit of a dark wash using some um, oil paint, like I said, and a bit of. Uh, what oil paint for that? Two seconds for John. Uh, yes. I use this some. Uh, Burnt umber, so it was kind of a burnt umber oil wash. A stain. So we get a you know, brush that we're not too predictable about. Give our wood a bit of a stain. No, 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 no. Let's shut off humming and singing away to himself again. So you normally have music on, but if I put music on now, I'd probably get done for copyright strikes and God knows what else. But uh, for all those of you that are interested, I listen to Pink Floyd when I'm doing this. I find it uh, invigorating. <laughs> Invigorating. Taking away the moments that make up a dull day. We flitter and waste the hours in an offhand way. Gigging around on a piece of ground in your hometown. And all that kind of stuff. Speaking of uh, Pink Floyd, Roger Waters has a new album out. Purchased it there. Well, I didn't purchase it. I got, I got a present of it. Yes, I got a present of it for Father's Day, actually. And uh, Abby and Rachel gave me a lovely present of that. And um, for those of you that are into uh, Pink Floyd and Roger Waters and all that kind of stuff, it is a very, very good album. Very, very good album. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you the name of it, go find out yourselves, because I don't want to be done for advertising. Okay. Now, there's a little bit of an oil stain, almost done. Okay, just the last little bit of it there on the side. And you can leave it as that, or you can give it a bit of a varnish, and I use a, a, a clear varnish. But I won't be putting the varnish on today, I, I'll let that sort of soak in, but you know yourselves, it'll be varnished up. I'll, I'll the final, final reveal will be on the uh, on, on, on next week's bum, on Monday's bum. But uh, we'll have the uh, we'll have it finished, shall we say, today, as good as finished in this video. Right. So 
here we are and we've got our base all nicely cleaned off and everything else so all that's left now is to put our figures in and stuff now in that five minutes when i was clean i just did a clean up i put a, I st stuck your man onto the bike and i'm after giving him a little pig at the end of the uh on one of the wheels so that will stay in place so now what we do is we'll give your little pig a twist and pop it out this is our uh, our rifleman now on here I put a little bit of uh, CA glue or super glue whatever you want to call it All right just a little blob of super glue into that and plop him into place our second chappy same idea rub in the in the glue should pop his popped his uh, peg out first pop him in uh, our third chappy Put the super glue right. use another little bit of glue John find these little bits of cardboard dead handy for just putting a little blob of glue on you're not going destroying anything and you don't have to go clean it up afterwards you just pick up the piece of cardboard and chuck it into bin into bin right and he's covering off like we said in that direction don't want him leaning over the edge of the thing all right now i i leave that now just until i leave this in place all right we move that into place there we get our m3 lee pop that in there give it a little bit of an angle why not we get our mr pointy stick decide where the motorbike is going to go we said it's going to go there like that so that is there make a little hole little bit of super glue just to hold it in place and there we go now I just have a turntable my squeaky turntable John's squeaky turntable I'm bringing it back out again and there we go lads there's our little uh, North African patrol. Okay, simple as that. Just a tiny little uh, little display base. Squeak! This he told you it was squeaky. <laughs> Lovely sound effects, aren't they? We we'll just move the whole thing so it doesn't squeak. <laughs> right. So there, there it is. All right. We'll be trying to bring the camera down to uh, kind of an eye, eye level. Squeak, squeak, squeak. There we go, let's. And that's it. That's our little um, weathering video finish. Started off as a weathering video for this, for just for the little pens or two, and it finished up with uh, the whole dial, the whole thing. So, I will leave it at that, lads. Hope you liked it, hope you liked this series, hope you've learned something from it. Um, it's got a couple of uh, nice comments so far from people that do you know, little hints and tips that people didn't know about that are just so simple, you know, that um, don't be afraid, don't be afraid to sort of uh, experiment and do things. Because it's from doing experimenting and uh, things that you know I learned the little bits that I've that I know, and from watching other people's videos uh, like uh, Jens, the non-prolific um, 135th scale 135th scale model maker uh, Jens, I learned the aerials of him. Okay, um, the graphite pencil I can't remember who I learned that one off. Uh, the dusting using uh, pastels, uh, Pencil Kill 13. I learned that off him. Um, 
you know loads of little pieces you pick up little bits and pieces from 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 everybody here on on youtube and it's dead handy so i will leave it at that lads and let you all uh get off and do your own little ones okay don't be afraid to uh to, to make up a little base cheap as chips like i said what was the cost of this whole thing all right half a block of um desk clay i use about half a block of desk clay on that three euro the base one euro fifty that's 450 uh the amount of say the, the of sand and gravel that i use on that you couldn't even price it pennies less than a, less say two cent um the little bits of static grass okay you go off and you buy the pack the box or whatever the box might cost you six five or six euro but for the amount of little pinch that you use it goes an awful long way so for this dio apart from apart from the figures and the and the um the the models and things like that the base costs less than a fiver and it's a nice little display base okay lads so i leave it at that hope you enjoyed it hope you enjoyed the series don't forget to like uh stick the old thumbs up and give it a like don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed and like i say if you have already subscribed i do appreciate it thank you very 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 much don't forget to stay tuned um we'll have future little uh hints and tips and videos and things like that so catch you up in the next one lads stay safe and uh don't forget go out and buy yourself a kit build it and enjoy it and don't be afraid to uh to weather them up a bit Okay lads, I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe. This is John, signing off.